Hello, this is Ralph from Happy Dog Training. Another car video. Let's talk about another important topic. And one thing that I post a lot on is the, uh, the seeking system. So I talk about the seeking system in my videos, but I don't think I've actually ever explained the seeking system and what this is all about. I know it's on my website. I've gone into it a little bit here and there, but I wanted to uh, take a moment and talk about this more directly because it's actually very important. And understanding that is going to help understanding some of the work that we do. So the seeking system is an emotional system. It is the, it's an acquisitional emotion. So everything I'm going to talk about now is basically affective neuroscience. Affective, not effective. Affective systems are the emotional systems in the brain. They're in uh, what's referred to as the second layer of the brain, the limbic system. This is where all the emotions are located. And emotions are universal amongst mammals. So all mammals have all emotions. There is no such thing as a distinct human emotion. Let that sink in. There's no such thing as a distinct human emotion. It doesn't exist. Huh? There's no unique human emotion. The emotional systems exist in all mammals. A mouse, a horse, a cat, a dog, a human being all have the same emotions. Now, humans obviously can express emotions we can talk about them we can reason think and talk our way into emotions and reason think and talk our way out of emotions now animals don't do that uh, that requires uh, the higher brain functions that we have that they don't have but the emotions themselves are there the emotional experiences are there the the internal process of fear of panic of rage of love of nurture of mating all these things these emotional systems are universal amongst mammals. Not reptiles, but mammals. And humans are mammals. I hope you know that. So humans are mammals. And that is uh, where a lot of the work starts that we do. Because behavior is driven by emotion. It's also something that's not really, that not everybody really believes or understands, but it, it is a fact, it's a scientific fact that most behavior we engage in is driven by emotion. We have an incredible ability to make uh, an emotional decision and then rationalize why that decision was the best way to go. We're great at that. So a typical example, and I've, I have done this myself, I think most people can relate. You have these ideas of what kind of car you want, what features you need when you rationally think about, okay, I need this and this and this and this. And then you show up at the dealer and, and they go, yeah, we don't have that. But we have this cool thing here. Look at that. And it's cool. It's really cool. It's not what you were looking for, but then you fall in love with it instantaneously and you kind of want it. But it's not what you decided that you're going to get when you walked in there. So the rational person would walk out and trying to find what, what you want. But that's not what most people end up doing. Right? Um, most people end up starting to think of reasons why this thing they emotionally already decided they want is really the right one. And then they rationalize themselves all the way through. So, so they rationalize the emotional choice. So behavior is driven by emotion. I'm not saying that is always the case. Obviously, we do make some rational decisions along the way, but a lot of behavior is driven by emotions. If you talk to hypnotists, if you talk to NLP practitioners, psychologists, uh, most of them will tell you it's around 90% of all decisions and behaviors are driven by emotions. So emotion regulates behavior. When you have a dog reacting strongly to another dog or person or an event, oftentimes, more often than not, I'm talking here 95, 98% of the time, it really is that much, the behavior is driven by emotion. So if you have a dog that acts aggressively towards another dog, chances are it's an emotional response. And if it's an emotional response, then how you go about fixing that should take a different different route than if it's a, a completely irrational response or a behavioral response or a misbehavior, how people will call it. This dog is misbehaving, he's barking at the person. Well... Why is he barking at the person? Is he barking at the person because he's an aggressive dog and wants to eat that person just because the person happens to exist? Or is he afraid of that person and tries to make that person go away? 
So in both cases, it's a very different reason why that is. That, that's an important distinction. So, but behavior regulates emotion. So the emotional systems that we generally distinguish uh, in uh, the core systems or the, the ones that we not just distinguish, but the ones that we understand the best are fear, panic, rage, and seeking. Those four are referred to as the blue ribbon emotions. That term was coined by Jack Panksepp, one of the longtime scientists who, who worked and formulated the, the science of affective neuroscience. And there's a book by, by that name, Affective Neuroscience by Jack Panksepp. I think it was fourth edition by the time he passed away. And I think every dog trainer should read it. Um, the same principles are outlined in a little easier digestible fashion in the book um, Animals Make Us Human by Temple Grannon. But Affective Neuroscience goes in it way deeper. Um, but it's a harder read. But if you're a professional, you should you should actually read this book. So the emotional systems that drive behavior on the negative side, fear, panic, rage. On the positive side, we have things like play, nurture, mating. Mm -hmm. These are also all emotions, but they're more positive emotions. The seeking system is an acquisitional emotion. It is also kind of the lever that shifts the positive to the negative. You can think of it as a hot, cold uh, lever on a, on, a, on a water faucet for a shower or your, your sink. Uh -huh. So if I'm in a fear state and I turn on the seeking system, it'll take me out of the fear state and switch me over into a positive emotion, like, the, like, a, like a play, for example. So when I want to turn on the, the seeking system to turn off fear, I'm going to move my emotional response into a positive side. And the seeking system is what allows me to do that. Now, the seeking system is also the system in the brain that releases dopamine. It's the dopamine release system. Huh? You release dopamine. Dopamine is one of those brain camels that makes you feel good. One of those two. Huh? Dopamine makes you feel good and arouses you, while serotonin makes you feel good and relaxes you. So technically, you only like two things, dopamine and serotonin. Huh? Those are the internal experiences of feeling good. One with arousal, one with relaxation. So by, by turning on the seeking system, I turn off the fear response. It's basically the dog becomes afraid. I turn on seeking. He goes, ooh, and go over here. And I accomplish that by one of three things. Ideally, all three, but one is enough to trigger the seeking system. I can turn on the seeking system through the desire for something good, the presence of something good, or non-threatening novelty. So when you see me throwing food, for example, that's non-threatening novelty. Wanting to explore a sand on a bush can be the desire for something good. Looking at something I have in my hand, like a ball or treat or something else, could be the presence of something good. Or just seeing it in the, in the vicinity could be the presence. If I have all three, holy trifecta, right? It's perfect. <laughs> so I have my, my seeking system goes boom. But one of those three is enough to turn on the seeking system. So if my dog's in a fear state, and I throw treats through his field of vision, and his eyes start tracking those, the seeking system comes online. He's like, woof, 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 and what's that? That's the, the moment the seeking system kicks in, turns off the fear response, curiosity comes, and then goes into a nurturing state when he's pursuing the food. But even if he doesn't pursue the food, if it's just about looking at the food and tracking the motion of it, that's enough. It's enough to trigger the seeking system. It's enough to take him out of the fear state. And by doing that over and over and over again, my dog goes into fear state, I power up seeking, I take him out and move him over. I change how my brain responds to that stimuli. So I have a lot of neuronic activity on the fear side. Every time that powers up, I power it down and turn on a positive emotion on the other end. That is what that process of throwing food is about. Fear comes on dump some food, dog goes, who? what's that? Trigger seeking, comes out, goes into a nurturing state. It doesn't matter if he eats the food. It's not about that. He can eat the food, that's fine, because at that moment his brain is already in a less fearful state or more nurturing state, so he gets rewarded for the emotional shift if he eats it. But as long as he tracks the motion and it takes his focus off, as long as it distracts him for a moment, I'm accomplishing the goal. And now some people will say, oh, you're just distracting the dog. And that's not wrong, but it's not just distracting the dog. It's a very methodical way of reprogramming the brain to react less in the fear state. Huh? So that's what seeking is all about. And uh, yeah, that's it. So I hope I hope that was informative and um, talk to you next time. Bye.